Hey, what's going on Authentic Church? Can you believe it's already the end of 2022? I believe that how you finish off a year is important on how you start the next year. And if you want to start strong, I think we need to finish strong. A lot of people are really good at starting strong, but it's a lot harder to finish strong. And so we at Authentic Church decided we are going to incorporate something called the release offering so we can end the year strong so that we can start 2023 even better. And some of you are like saying, what is the release offering? Well, our church has decided a few years ago that at the end of the year, we are going to give an offering that goes above and beyond our regular tithes and offering for that day. It's a time where we get to literally activate faith to get uncomfortable and to use it to advance the kingdom of God in multiple ways. Let me remind you last year, 2021 at the end of the year, what happened there? Because we started talking about the release offering and I mentioned that next door, we had the new China Inn building just sitting there and we wanted to remodel it and finish it so that we would have a youth building for the next generation. I shouted that vision and everyone began to get excited and expectant and we came up to release offering day and you all gave $27,000 above your regular tithes and offerings. Come on, let's give God praise there. That's amazing. Oh, and this happened too. So will y'all please tell everybody at Authentic Church that an authentic check is coming for $100,000 for y'all to continue. Oh, y'all better keep doing what God's called you to do. Are you serious? Just like that, in one day, $127,000 came in so we could advance the kingdom of God. So thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you, trustees, for holding us accountable so we can be the best that we can be with the money that comes into our church. So we got to work. In March, we started going right into the youth building and we started tearing down the walls and preparing it. And we've been working nonstop. And I'm so grateful for everyone who's had a hand in that. We have the drywall up. It is being taped in mud and soon to be painted. It is getting done. And we are so close to opening up what we're going to be calling the 820 building next door so the next generation can continue to hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we didn't stop there with the release offering. We took 10% of that and we threw it right back into impactful outreach. We've used it for our Serve Saturdays throughout the year. We have used it for Mosaic. We've sent money to Hope Pregnancy Center. We've helped church planners. We've helped the Boys and Girls Club. We've helped teachers make better uh, purchases for their classrooms so that their students can learn in a fun environment. You are all making a difference because you you finished strong we were able to start strong and here we are coming at the end and on December 11th as our church celebrates turning 10 years old on our 10th birthday we are going to act in faith again and we are going to release an offering above and beyond our tithe and offering to see how we can finish strong so we can start strong in 2023 so start praying if you haven't start preparing and ask God what he's putting on your heart because we have this opportunity that I believe we can see God work again in our church and it's going to accomplish so much for the kingdom of God. So December 11th, come prepare because God's gonna use you to help more people look like Jesus in their everyday lives. And so today's gonna be a little bit different. We tried it, we're gonna try something different. If you are first time guest here, uh, we don't usually sit down and talk together. This is my wife, Lizzie Jensen. My name is Sean Jensen. Uh, we are married and have three daughters, so things are getting pretty serious. Uh, so, anyways, <laughs> but uh, we're so blessed to be able to serve this house. Um, we're glad that we get to go to this church too, not just serve it, we're glad that we're a part of it. And you guys make that. And, and you love our family well. You serve us well. You love our girls well. You don't expect them to be perfect because they're pastor kids. You know that their kids just like y'all kids are heathens. Yeah. And we all are heathens trying to raise kids. Yeah. And they steal everybody else's food. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really sorry we're working on it. <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> little kleptos. But anyways, uh, so today's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to explain a little bit here. Um, we already said happy birthday. But I want to read a scripture in the Old Testament for you and unpack what we're going to do. And I think it's going to really encourage you. And I'll explain why. <laughs> Please forgive me. I'm overcoming a lot of stuff. Deuteronomy 4 9. It says, But watch out, Moses writes to the people of Israel, be careful never to forget what you yourself have seen. Do not let these memories, everyone say memories. memories. Thanks for the memories. Escape from your mind as long as you live, and be sure to pass them on to your children and grandchildren. This is a big deal. 
He says, don't forget, be sure to pass them on. Um, do you ever have memories escape your mind? Uh, I know a lot of times I'm, I have memories escape my mind. Like uh, I'm reading a book right now. I love reading, and one of the books I'm reading is called The Escape Artist. And it might seem a little intense right now. You're like, is that about Houdini? Is that about a magician? It's not. Uh, it's about a guy who actually escaped the Auschwitz concentration camp uh, to warn the world. And uh, it's a really intense story. And I remember I was reading it called The Escape Artist. And um, my, his name is Randolph Verbo. And uh, my daughter was asking me about what book I was reading, Avery, our oldest. And I was like, well, I'm reading a book called The Escape Artist. She goes, ooh, tell me more, right? Because it sounds exciting. And uh, I told her what it was about. And when I, when I mentioned the concentration camp and I mentioned what was going on, she was just kind of like, okay, thanks for sharing. <laughs> but the depth of the story really didn't mean much to her as much as it meant to us who kind of understand what happened in that time. And how many people know throughout years, sometimes the things that happen aren't as remind, or we don't remember them as much. Like this week, if you didn't know, on December 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor happened. And uh, a lot of people are here like, I didn't even drink. I was literally my freshman year in history class. My teacher in front of everybody asked me, they said, Sean, I was like, what's up? He goes, what happened December 7th, 1941? I was like, I have no idea. And everyone, everyone in class is like, <gasps> I was like, great. This is a great way to start my freshman year of high school. I'm getting homeschooled the rest of my life. And so uh, nothing against it. I was just embarrassed. And um, so I say that because I was explaining these things to her and what was going on. But how many people know it's, it's really hard sometimes to remember throughout the years we tend to forget. And uh, not just bad things. A lot of times we remember the bad things more, but honestly, we, remember, we forget about the good things. And so as we were praying and preparing uh, the team, I was like, guys, can we do something special for our birthday? We just finished a series that we talked about looking forward. And we talked about how when we look forward in the, pr in the future, we're going to be active in faith in the, in the present. But today, the message is looking backwards. Like, Sean, we just told us to look forward. And here's why. Because if we want to move forward in faith, we're going to have to look backwards in God's faithfulness. If we're going to move forward knowing that God's going to ask us to do step out and be crazy, we got to look back and when we stepped out last time and he came through. And, and so I just felt like what we wanted to do today, I was like, can we just do something really chill for our birthday? And can we just talk about like the top 10 things that happened the last 10 years that were God moments to inspire our faith to say, if he did this the last 10 years, I can't wait to see what he does the next 10 years. Because if he was faithful back there, he's going to be faithful up there as well. And so that's kind of what today is. We're celebrating our birthday, and we're going to talk about the top 10 things. And trust me, my wife will talk. Uh, this was going to be the opening moment uh, for that. So we're going to go here in a second. But I do want to show you a picture of me when we first started the ministry uh, in 2012. This was me. I was 26 years old. And then here's a picture, recent picture today. That's where I am. So you guys, they keep me young. <laughs> I got so much to look forward to. So ministry is so simple. It's easy. You guys did this to me, and uh, people say I look like Bill Murray. Uh, I look like your little cheeks. <laughs> it's adorable. Babe, look at that. I know. Look at that. I see it. You see that? I see it. Good it's thing cute. you married me for my smarts, huh? That's what, yeah, sure. Well, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to talk about the top 10 uh, things. But before we do, it is our birthday, so we figured the best way to do this is with some cake. So we got some cupcakes for y'all. Yeah. Can we pass out some cupcakes? They're going to be bringing them out. Come on, let's all sing together. Bring them out. Bring them out. <laughs> I was going to sing, happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Authentic Church. Authentic. Happy birthday to you. So yeah. please take a cupcake, a napkin. I know it's really chill. We'll start passing them out. Yeah, we're just, it's a chill vibe. So take one down, pass it around. They will stain your mouth green. We don't care. I'm like, I wish they would have got white it's frosting ones. Oh, yeah. Green's where it's at. We want everyone to know you were authentic this morning. Yes. Everyone's going to be like, oh, they they. Where'd you get cakes. that green mouth from? Authentic church? <laughs> Celebrate and hard. This is fun. Thank you, all the volunteers. You guys yeah, are Yeah, give it up for our it. squad members. Woo! <laughs> Some of them can't clap because they got that cupcake. If I head. am correct, I think the cupcakes, Misty, I could be wrong. Are they from Fops? 
Fops Cupcakes, Woo! everybody. We only get you the best. We know. Yes. Go and support them. They're amazing people. Hey, while you guys are getting your cupcakes, I do want to give of the top 10 things, we have a few honorable mentions yeah. uh, of what's happened the last 10 years. First off was Attack the Block. Yes. Attack the Block is an honorable mention. We used to serve our community. Remember those days? Yeah, once a month, we do whatever. We <laughs> we'd like mow the grass, rake the rake the leaves, paint people's houses, clean the gutters. Yeah, anything. It we was did amazing. Whatever. And we would just pick a block in Pontiac, and we would use a Saturday, and we would just do all the houses on it that was block. Great. Uh, honorable mention: the oh, mix women's the event. The mix, the women's event. Our, yeah. Tell them about the first one. That was crazy. So we, had first, a, we had a cello. Yeah, it was like, we had a cello on stage. We actually, Liz and the ladies, rented out the Eagle Theater because we were portable. They said, "Let's do the Eagle Theater," and they filled it up. Over a hundred women at yeah. the first mix event came out. That was cool. It was awesome. And then I put family experiences. We started doing family experiences where we bring the kids in yes. uh, the last year, and they have blessed me so yeah. much. You guys enjoy the family experiences? Yeah. I good. feel like they teach us how to worship, you know? Yeah. Faith like a child. Love cool. it. Cool. All right. Well, here's the top ten things. Uh, the first thing that when I look back and think of God's faithfulness and what he has done in these God moments, it was doubling the size of our church in one week. Oh, I remember those. Good, oh, Do you remember yep, that? there it is. The living room. So we were in our living room sessions and uh, that means we didn't even launch yet. And uh, there was like eight of us just talking and planning and dreaming. Yeah. And then there was no, a it was like four. It was like, no, you're right. Six. Yeah, there was, was six. Like, there was eight. Of, there was eight of us. It might have been and eight. it's OK. And then we had a knock on the door. And at this time, we were sharing the vision of our church through, like, Vimeo. I made, like, a nine-minute video that no one wanted to watch because I didn't do my research. And uh, just said, hey, we're coming to Pontiac to start a church. And we let it go out there. And uh, our second living room session, we heard a knock on the door. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was the Mueller family. If no one knows the Mueller family, it was uh, parents and six kids. So it was eight people. We so we grew. doubled overnight. We doubled in, like, one <laughs> second. It was great. <laughs> We're like, come on in. Our I'll sit on the floor. I was, our church was growing, y'all. We we're like, oh my gosh, we just doubled overnight. We went from eight to sixteen, and it was one family. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the cool thing really was is he was praying for years. He lived in Pontiac, and they were driving an hour and ten minutes yeah. to go to a church to set up and tear down. Mm -hmm. Him and his whole family, and he was praying every single day that there would be a church like ours that mm -hmm. would plant here. So he saw my video, and he's like, we're going. That's and so they cool. knocked, and they saw the video, and they came. We said they came out of the cornfields. We didn't. We've never met them before. Oh, we didn't even know them. It was great. We didn't even have insurance with them. I know. <laughs> and now we do. And yeah. so they're, uh, they're not a part of. They yeah. left this year. They moved to Bloomington. Yeah. All their families over there, and they were here faithfully for those nine years, and they uh, served our house people. well. Amazing Yes. So we love the the Mueller's. So that yes. was a, that was an awesome day. Yeah, it was a pretty uh, good day. Cool. Number two is man launch day. Launch, not lunch. Launch day. Launch. The first day uh, of. These were our, like welcome walls. So we're like, hey, first time guests, go to the blue wall and or the green wall. It yeah. was great. And Jim that, was, had that was our announcement board when you yeah. walked in, y'all. You guys want to find out what's going on? Check out our chalkboard. It's in the lobby. Yeah, it's great. Uh, there's some kids helping out because we had to set up and tear down every single week. That was us in the junior high on the floor. Yeah. Um, and it turned out to where we ended up getting all these pipes and drapes. So everything you see in this room actually was portable. We actually set this up every single week yeah. from scratch. The, Not lay the, yeah. leave stuff there. We load it up, got there, every and we, cr we created all that in the junior high yeah. every single Sunday. Yeah. Um, it was, yeah, some of them. Where's my set up and tear down crew at? Where are you yeah. at? Oh, geez. <laughs> the oh, geez. There, there's some camaraderie there. Yeah, the green wall was for first time guests. Oh, that's right. The that's blue right. wall was if you made a decision to follow Jesus. Yeah. And, uh, and Jim, Brandy Mueller did the, yeah. the, that stuff. Uh, Jim loved to set up those walls. He loved it. Jim Haley, <laughs> our state, he, he was like, I love this so much. He hated it. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. They our, would fall on people. I it know, was ridiculous. Was we had our, no money. Our garage floor so has blue squares and green squares all over it. Because we were like, <laughs> you know, it's the good old days. Or you also had to like, we, we have rehearsals here on Thursday night for Sunday. Oh, yeah. Our rehearsals were literally in our garage. And our garage is not heated. So that was yeah. really fun. Yeah. We literally had like a jam band. Yeah. Like we were the neighbor that everyone hated. Yep. It was uh, It was great. So launch day, it was December 16th, 2012. And uh, we were at the high school and 75 people showed up right off the yes. bat. Uh, and we were like, oh my gosh, this is a move of God. And then we realized that half of them were just there for support. <laughs> and <laughs> and then the next, next week, week there was 30 of us. Uh, and we started. Kumbaya. <laughs> yeah. And we started and uh, God was faithful. Yeah, it was um, great. He was super Super faithful. So we were kind of moving on along with that. 
Um, and about a year in, there was about 70 or 80 or 90 people coming, and yeah. we were in the junior high. I remember we would put chairs out, and uh, we, would have to, we would have to bring chairs out almost every week because um, we just put so many out, and then we would outgrow it and put more out. Mm -hmm. And I think we were um, at like 70 or 80 people, and Easter 2014 was coming upon oh, us, like I a couple months that. away. Yeah. Remember that? And uh, so number three is this, Easter 2014. Um, and here's why. And I'll explain these uh, pictures in a second that are going to pop up. Uh, we were in the junior high. I remember what I was preaching on. We were preaching on the little cloud and uh, Elijah. And for some reason, I just got this, like, moment in me. We had 70 people coming. And I looked out. And I was like, guys, I just want to let you know, Easter's coming. And we're going to invite the entire town. And there's going to be over 200 people that show up. And I remember I went home and I cried. Yes, he really did. He's like, why did I, I say that? I was like, what that? the heck? Why would you allow me to say that? Why didn't you go, stop? I was like, okay. Because I'm let's like, there's like 130 extra people who yeah. are just going to come one week. That's out of nowhere. But it got crazy. We, yeah. It was like invite wars. Like people were going out, inviting, leaving it in bathroom stalls at Walmart. We got in trouble, but it's okay. People still came. Walmart contacted <laughs> us and said, uh, your church is leaving invite cards on the yeah. urinals and toilets. And we were, <laughs> and we're like, like <laughs> It yeah, was great. So they're like, you can't do that. I'm like, I'm sorry, we didn't know. We didn't tell them to do it. You know, it was their free will. Anyways, continuing on, there was people that we're like, not a cult. We don't tell them what yeah, to do. Come on. We left Weird. like tips, huge tips, and we would leave like invite cards with people. I mean, it was crazy. And people put them in the uh, the debit card machine at the <laughs> at the gas station, so they had to take it out yeah. in order to put their card in. Oh, and then they would pay at Walmart. Uh, people are notes right now, like I'm doing this for Christmas. Yeah. This is at great. McDonald's, they would pay. And then leave their card for the next person so they knew who paid for that. It was yeah. really cool. So they just like I said it. I was cr I was like, what am I? Why did we do this? Why did I say that? And people just took it to heart. And I remember we came on Easter 2014, a year and a half into our ministry, and we were at the junior high, and all of our squad members were serving. I said, listen, if anyone, if we run out of seats, you're gonna have to stand up. And they're like, okay. I was like, because we want them to have a spot, we're gonna stand up in the back. And uh, I remember we had people serving that were standing up in the back watching the seats filled. And then we had to pull the bleachers out uh, <laughs> because 260 people showed up on Easter. It was like, oh, my I gosh. Know. Talk about emotional. Yeah. So after the fact, I was like, God, I think you're the one that stirred that in my heart <sighs> to do that. And you can see the pictures. Here's, uh, here's me on the gym floor. We didn't even have a stage yet. And this is them up in the bleachers, actually, right there. We didn't have, a, we didn't have any stage yet or whatever. And people just came to hear the gospel. And I think that day, I have it written in my Bible. I think like 19 people made a decision to follow <laughs> Jesus that day. And it was Man. just, it was incredible. Um, it was just a moment. I feel like I wrote in my Bible that when I give my Bible to my girls, they'll see like this is uh, what God did. So <laughs> super some, pumped about that. Need some tissues That's what happens when we live in faith. <laughs> so we always said that we go to the deep end. And I was definitely yeah. in the deep end in that. I even remember aspect. what song we sang it on that Easter Sunday. With the what? The song we sang on that Easter Sunday. Was it? it was like, um, um, this is my story, this, this is my is song, my song. Yeah. praising my Savior all the day long. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> as people are filling the seats, I'm like, this is great. I was a mess, y'all. I was a mess. But that kind of brings us to our next one, though, is when we were worshiping one Sunday. Oh, yeah. It was in the high school, I think. Yeah. And Top everything just went out. Like, the lights went out, the sound went out, everything went out. It was like pitch black in the auditorium. It was crazy dark. And we just kept singing. And it was so cool because it was like the sound of the audience even got louder. And it was like we didn't need instruments. We didn't need um, microphones. We just needed voices and hearts towards God. And it was it was really great. Yeah, moment. I think that so the top thing was blackout worship is what I put down here. And it was a member when we talked to people. I said, remember that time we were literally at the high school and everything went out. And all of a sudden you still, still hear, you keep hearing the voices without missing a beat. Yeah. They were just singing. And for me as a pastor, it meant a whole lot because we do have lights. We do have production. Yeah. We do have these things. Exactly. But we should be able to worship without these things. Yep. And so when you hear everything go out and your church is still worshiping, you kind of have a moment as a pastor like, okay, I think we're leading these people better than what we think yeah. we are. Yep. Like it's not just about these things. They're important. They serve a purpose. But we can worship without it. Yep. And so it also happened with the, hur the hurricane. Wow. Tornado. There's hurricanes. No, we get hurricanes here in Illinois. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You didn't know that? Yeah. Got a bad one there. Way to go. So there was a tornado that hit Washington. Great memory. Yeah. <laughs> and it went out as well. And uh, and it was at the junior, junior high, and the high. same thing happened. People and it was just like, kept singing. It was I think it's one of the most powerful Sundays 
where it was and everything went out and everything broke right before oh. our sub and tear down crew. The other, I gotta tell you a story. The other day, uh, we're doing Rooted and Austin is our youth pastor. He's just jumped on the speeding bullet like this in November. He's been here for a year now, y'all. Yeah. He's been serving and plugging away. And he's got a lot on his plate when it comes to production and Rooted and stuff. Was, and he was running around, have to get some stuff. And you could tell, because I've been there many times, because me and him are high strung, that it was getting a little overwhelming. And uh, I'm not saying what he did. He was just a little overwhelmed. And, uh, and uh, after we, me, Colin, and my dad were back there too, and we're just chilling, eat, like just chilling, talking, and he's running around, and we're just talking. Like, oh, yeah, we'll make that change. Yeah, we'll make that change. Uh, and when he walked out, he did everything well. Uh, I just looked at, and I told Austin this, I looked at Colin and my dad. I said, you know what's funny? Like, he wasn't here during Set Up and Tear Down. <laughs> like, we're over here, like, he's, like, stressed out about this, and we're just like, okay, okay. Because we had moments, literally 20 seconds before we had to start, everything would go out. Yeah. Uh, everything would break. We had to go find stuff at Walmart. Like, so yeah. we were just, like, we just learned just to be like, hey, yeah. he's probably, like, so, like, aren't you guys losing yeah. your mind? It so, was crazy. Uh, but we're so grateful for Austin. But we just thought it was hilarious because when you're when you set up and tear down, you don't know what was going to happen that week. No, you don't. You're like uh, just praying as you plug it in. It's like, like Lord. you're preaching and you see a guy vaping <laughs> in the middle of. The <laughs> <laughs> I'm preaching. I see a puff of smoke go up in the air. It was great. And then that guy. I'm like, who well, asked glad you're here. You just can't do that here. Like, do you remember that guy who asked you? He's like, hey, we should hang out. Do you smoke weed? Oh yeah. That was great. Yeah. Sean's like, I throw a frisbee. <laughs> <laughs> it's the closest best. Thing. A kid, we gotta go. A kid stop me know, after. I know. I really love what God's doing in this church and stuff. He goes, we should hang out sometimes. Like, yeah, let's do it. He goes, do you smoke weed? I'm like, what? What did you just say? He's like, <laughs> you smoke? I was like, oh no, I'm like, I don't do that, man. I was like, I play frisbee. He goes, oh, dope. Yeah. We should play frisbee sometime. <laughs> Maybe it was him that had this vape in the middle. Of the <laughs> no, it wasn't him. It was Brian Gardner. Shout out to Brian Gardner, everybody. He would say it. He would say it. Come on. Come on. If you're new to our church, Brian, you would hear him from everywhere. He would get me preaching. He'd be like, come on. He trademarked that phrase in our church. It's true. So, if you uh, see him on Facebook, he still puts TMs. He still sees it. <laughs> He's probably watching. He'll probably post about oh, it today. Just funny. pay attention. Uh, number five was our Thrive Group Fair that we had. I think Ooh, at that yeah. moment, the Armstrongs, mm -hmm. Matt and Tiffany Armstrong were in charge of it. And our church was growing. And we said, if our church, church is getting bigger, then we need to get smaller. smaller. Because what we found out is it's hard to... We say it this way. It's hard to be seen in a crowd, but you can be seen in a crew. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people like, people don't see me or my needs, and we try to encourage people. Get into small groups of people because that's where you can, like, grow in your faith. That's what kind of Rooted's all about. And so we just said we, we have a need, and we need to figure this out. And Matt and Tiffany Armstrong for that season, uh, before she went through her cancer, about literally said, we'll do it. And he just stepped up to the plate. And we launched it. We had a fair out in the lobby, and 155 people yes. signed up to get in a group That's that insane. week. It was a god. We're like, yeah. oh my gosh! Like, just hunger. There was just so much. There was just so much hunger in our church. For me, it was not like, oh, it's a number thing. No, it was 155 people saying we want to keep growing in our faith. We want community. And uh, I honestly believe that's what helped us stay strong. I believe was people it. had friendships. It was no longer the pastor's job to meet with everybody. Mm -hmm. um, they had they had people doing that. And so, I love it. It was a great, great time. Uh, we had, yeah, and I do want to say, too, uh, we don't have Thrive Groups. That's what we call them. But we are relaunching. Our goal tentatively is to relaunch Authentic Groups in spring 2023. Yay! So we are pumped by it. Um, we have Rooted. And so if you're like, I would love to lead a group, when we start announcing it, we're going to need group leaders. Mm -hmm. But uh, Authentic 2023, our Authentic Groups spring 2023, we're yeah. going to be launching some more. So. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, like, Number the, six. Number Tell six. Me number six is our favorite. Oh my gosh! I don't know if anybody of you here remember All In Sunday, uh, where we did uh, baptisms. It was spontaneous. I think you decided what was it like Monday, and you were like, Rooted. it was like a week before our team. They hated this, by the way. I was like, guys, we have seventeen people signed up for baptisms. Like, yeah. I was like, let's do spontaneous baptisms. <laughs> Like, they don't know until Sunday that we're going to yeah. do it. And we need to have everything so there. Those shirts right there on the screen. Yeah. We, like, we went to a guy that goes to our church here, yeah. Derek Schwartz. He had, this, like, a screen printing thing in his, like, garage. And we were, like, printing all of these shirts with this yellow ink. Yeah. Some of them were, like, super high. Some of them were super low. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I did that one. <laughs> it was cool, though. Yeah. It was really cool. And they went out. They got shorts from, like, Walmart. And they made bags. And, uh, and I said, hey, guys, what if we just... What if, we, what if we just believe for 50 people to get baptized in one Sunday? Uh, yeah. Back then, we didn't have like this. We would set up, uh, once a year, we would do a, a huge baptism, like 
day where we yeah. would use the pool or something, and then we would just baptize people. And we had 17 people signed up, and at All In, we preached a message about baptism. Yep. And by the end, so this is crazy, by the end of this experience, you see these people getting baptized. We had 45 people uh, go All In with their faith in one moment um, on that side. It was, it was like, oh, my gosh, God, you're so good. Yeah. But we prayed for 50. I was like, Lord, you did amazing things. This is awesome. But there's... We prayed for 50, and we found out there was a family in our church who couldn't make it, but they heard the message, and they, their, them and their entire family got baptized by the end of the week in their pool at their house, <laughs> and it was like 52 people all together. So yeah. God was so faithful to do that. I was like, you're so that. good, but you're kind of a punk too because I'm like, why would you do this to me? Yeah. But, oh, that's, oh that's my brother. Uh, oh, I had to picture. put that in there. Uh, I held him down really long. That's why yeah. he's laughing. I thought next, he, he, yeah, sorry, go ahead. He thought he was going to die, uh, and so... It's coming up here in a second. Yeah, that's the line right there on the right. There's the people in the bleachers at this room. And then that's my brother. Uh, if you guys don't know our story, my mom prayed for all of us. We were not following the Lord at all. Um, I got saved. My brother was not following the Lord. And he, him and his wife started coming to our church at that time. And uh, he just said, I'm going, on, I'm going all in. And he's been serving here and being faithful. And so that was a memorable moment for me, y'all. Yeah. So I put it up there for me. Uh, but I knew it would bless you too. Yep. Cool. Uh, how about the roadhouse? The yes. building we are in right now, y'all, yeah. that's the bar. Yep. That was back in the back, and I decided what better place to share the vision than at the bar. <laughs> yep. And so that's Pete, where the kids area is right now, Yeah, too. so your kids are back there. We actually left some kegs back there for them, but it's uh, <laughs> they're dry now. Uh, so I'm just kidding. We, we didn't save any. But, um, yeah, we grabbed people who were going to, I don't even know the full story. I don't have time to share the whole story. Mm -hmm. It was 2016, and we had to keep moving. So, like, we had the high school during the summertime because they have AC, and then we would have the junior high during the school season because we could kind of manipulate the, the room to make it feel like how we wanted it to feel. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, we had to, and then all of a sudden things started falling through. They had dates and events, and then yes. we would have to go somewhere. We had to go outside. People were like, we, we need to go back, and we need to do outside church again, and I was like, you know why we did that, right? Because we had, we were homeless. <laughs> For we real. had nowhere to go. We're taking we're, it outside. So we were just like, guys, we're going outside. Like, this is such a good idea. It's like, it's because we're homeless. Jesus, please help it not rain. <laughs> we just didn't tell them we were homeless. We just said, this is a good idea. And yeah. we believe that we would be back in the building by the next week, which would be this building right here. Yeah. Uh, and so we kind of had to get a place. So after four years of serving, setting up and tearing down, we just gave uh, actually to a building mm -hmm. campaign. And um, this property was like $500,000 mm -hmm. when we first looked, and we just couldn't afford it. Everything yeah. back to the green property. Me and Jim, Jim Haley, you guys see him up here sometimes. Um, he also serves with our guest experiences out there. He, um, we, met with <laughs> we, met <laughs> we met with the lady who owned the Freakster's Roadhouse, and she <laughs> hit on me the entire time, which was awkward. Uh, she was an old lady. I didn't, I didn't reference. Sorry, it wasn't like weird. It was like I was uncomfortable. Uh, she was like 60s or something. She knows Al Pacino lives by him in L.A., supposedly. And, uh, and so she's like, I'll sell it to you for $500,000. And we're like, we just can't do it. Um, and so we prayed, and we just let it go. And uh, someone bought it. When we first looked at it, the Freaksters had it, and then we just let it go. Uh, and after everything came to an end, she's just like, you know what? I'll give it to you for two seventy-five. dollars uh, So I tell people we bought property with a building on it. And, uh, and this place was ready to go. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Jack Daniel chandeliers hanging in the ceilings. We should have left those. That would be funny. Yeah. Um, there was literally like black chandeliers and it had like uh, Jack Daniel bottles, bottles hanging from it. Just like, I'm like, let's just get rid of those. And then literally someone from our church is like, don't get rid of them. I'm like, Why? And he goes, let me try something. People were buying our yes, chandeliers. it was so funny. Like, they were spending, like, $600 yep. for these chandeliers. Um, it was crazy, though. Like, we were knocking walls down, pulling kegs out. It was, oh, the smell. I just remember that. It was horrible. And then we had people, like, on sanders. <laughs> like, it was really funny trying to sand these floors. Um, we were pull, pulling up tiles. We had um, Mark and Sandy Lewis. He literally did not work for a full month and worked solely here. Yeah, he, they put a lot of effort, I mean, all of them. We got to the point, I think it was, a, it was the opening day, and we were still putting doors on the hinges, right? <laughs> uh, the day we opened up, literally Mark was putting up the last door <laughs> while people were walking in. Mm -hmm. And we've still been remodeling it from day one. So if, if you come in here, and listen, we understand, if you come in here like, ah, uh, this place, I mean, this place looks 
remarkable compared, compared to where it was yes. at. Like, and I'm so grateful how we've been a good steward as mm-hmm. a church. We still want to finish areas, obviously, yeah. uh, but the kids area all the way through here and everyone who's been a part. Um, there's areas that we still have to touch up, but there's been a lot of hard work. I remember we worked 30 days straight mm-hmm. from like seven in the morning until like two o'clock at night. It was crazy for 30 days. Like she was a single mom during this whole <laughs> month, and uh, and we it was just we painted, we did everything ourselves. And uh, I remember on that day they brought a lazy boy in uh, for Mark. The opening yeah, day. Yeah, they brought a lazy boy in and put it in the front row, and that was his seat on uh, <laughs> on Sunday morning. So yeah, he just no. like chilled. I think he fell asleep in the lazy boy. Yeah, he's like, I'm so tired. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, that was a huge, um, man, I remember Derek was here. He actually fell asleep. He stayed overnight because we didn't have the doors done. And it was like 3 in the morning, and we were starting on Sunday morning. And he literally slept here the whole night <laughs> for security reasons. <laughs> I was like, bro, you were sleeping. But he, he fell asleep like in like one of the couches or something. He's, I didn't find that out until last week. He goes, oh, yeah, I stayed the night there because I couldn't <laughs> leave. <laughs> <laughs> so we stayed back That's here. That's funny, yeah. yeah. When we painted the ceiling, we were like all black. Yeah. It was great. It was, it was awesome. wonderful. So God's been super faithful here, and this is a building to, to show, um, yeah, the church is not a building, but we need a building to gather, and so it's yeah. a huge blessing. And thank you for all the work that you guys have done and everyone that has poured mm-hmm. into it. It's been absolutely incredible. So number eight was a huge one for us. It was the Night to Shine yes. event that we did. Hey, hey. it was Night to Shine. Um, if you don't know what Night to Shine is, Tim Tebow has a foundation. It's called Night to Shine. And what it is is they throw a prom with people in, uh, with special needs. And so um, as a church, we decided that we wanted to throw a prom with, for people with special needs who may have never gone to prom. And uh, our church just literally mm-hmm. bound by, like, they just rallied around it was this. Awesome. I know COVID, we'll talk about that in the future, what went with COVID and all that other Night to Shines and stuff. Um, but we did three of these. But the very first one, I remember, we just went all out. It took a lot of work, a lot of people serving. Uh, I think we had like 70 or 80 um, guests show up that night in the snow. We had limo rides for them. Yeah. Uh, we crowned them. We had food for them. And everyone had a buddy to dance with. And I think it just, honestly, like, our church needed that. Yes. It wasn't just like, oh, we're doing this for the community. It was literally like, no, we just did that to remind us. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just a really, I think it's probably top two for me of what yeah. we've done as a church. It was really cool. It was, I just can't, I don't even have words to really explain it. Yeah. It was uh, a blessing because yeah. when you see the blessing on other people's faces and people serving them, it was it was great. Also, we had karaoke, and I'll never hear yeah. thunder like that song. Doom, doom. <laughs> yeah, he it, nailed like, it. He killed it. It was great. I'm trying to remember his name. You guys might know. Bra- uh, Bra- no, Brad? No, Bradley. Bradley. Was I Bradley? think it was Caitlin Henson. Wasn't it your buddy that sang that song? Yeah. It was yeah. Great. Thunder. He did like 14 times. It was great. It was <laughs> awesome. Um, but yeah, it's just been amazing to serve. Um, <laughs> It's been amazing to serve in that capacity, in that role in our church, and just to open up a lot of doors to be able to serve more in that capacity. So Night to Shine, thank you for all who served out for that. You're probably wondering what does that look like in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll keep you up to date with it. But, man, what a memorable moment uh, to bless our community. And then. And then. And then. And then, and then, and then <laughs> COVID happened. Where's my car? And then. Then and COVID then, happened. And then you put it in a paper bag. And then. <laughs> sorry. Anyways. I shouldn't probably be quoting that movie at yeah, church. Yeah, so. I don't even know what it is. You <laughs> heathen? <laughs> yeah. Do we need Dude, to Dude, what's my tattoo yeah, say? Just jump in here. We'll just Sweet. What's my tattoo say? Dude, yeah. <laughs> you know what's up. All right, number nine. Number nine. Um, this one's blessed me a lot. I just put, it's the rebuilding. Y'all, I didn't know what to expect after COVID, to be honest with you. Um, I told Liz this way. Um, the other day, we have a two-year-old, and uh, she is so spunky. I don't even know that she just talks, like she's very good at talking, and she just she just it blows my mind. And my girls love McDonald's Happy Meals. Who doesn't love McDonald's Happy Meals? So we always get six pieces for the girls because then we kind of like snag one for like Millie, our two-year-old. Oh, six piece nuggets. Yeah, yeah six yeah, piece yeah. nuggets. And uh, all my McDonald's fans know what six piece are. So uh, and then and then <laughs> and then and then. <laughs> Uh, one night, she was she's getting bigger, so she's eating more. I was like, I'm gonna get her a happy meal, and like her Liz is like her own happy meal. I'm like, yeah, y'all, you should have saw her face when I brought in not just two boxes of happy meals, but the third one. You sh- she saw it was like for me, and like she grabbed it. She was like, and just like going so she was so excited. She like dumped it out and she ate all of her food like because it was so exciting for her. Yeah. And what blessed me was I've seen that on Avery's face and Charlie's face, but to relive it again for her, it like makes my it makes me so excited. So like the last two years, 
to see us like literally replanting a church after COVID because that's what's going on. Like you guys may not know this, but like there's so many people in here who were not here during before COVID, mm -hmm. and they're the ones who are literally carrying the weight of this ministry, yeah. and they're watching God move again for them. So what we saw the first like eight years, mm -hmm. they're seeing God do again this yeah, last two so years, awesome. and uh, it's been a joy to watch. Like I I'm in tears to see like how God's building our how God's building our church in that. So. Uh, just to give you an example, here's the things that we did this past year. Yeah, we we just announced this even last week that we had um, Rooted start, and we've had 72 people go through Rooted this year yeah. and complete it and graduate it. That was really cool. Yeah, yeah. So that was awesome. At the at the end of last year, we said we had a vision for this year. Yes. We had five eyes. We wanted irresistible oh, yeah, experiences. Yeah. We wanted um, intentional, intentional discipleship, invigorating okay. community investing in the next generation and impactful outreach. Mm -hmm. And we said we're going to start aiming towards these things. Um, so we obviously hired a youth pastor. Yep. Um, we're building a building right now or renovating a building for youth right now as we speak. And we poured so much money into the kids' environments and stuff um, for Authentic Youth. And uh, in August, we launched Authentic Youth mm -hmm. um, for our church. So that was one thing we did. And then intentional discipleship was rooted. rooted yep. And uh, we said we need people who have deep roots and we want them to grow in their walk with Christ mm -hmm. and 72 people, right? Yep. Yep. 72, 72 people have said, I want to take that next step. Also, I do want to tell you shameless plug, but not shameless. Uh, the rooted season for, uh, for, uh, for February that launch, which is like, what is that? Winter, spring 2023 is live and open now on that QR code. And they fill up fast. We already have people who are waiting who are already jumping into this mm -hmm. one. You can sign up right now, today. Um, it's a huge investment. It's a 10-week experience yep. that's going to help you grow in your faith. There's yeah. daycare involved and all those things. All the information is on mm -hmm. that QR code. But I would not. I've heard so many people say this was a game changer for our yeah. church. And so. also with our Five Eyes and Packwell Outreach, we saw that outreach we did at Fell Park where yeah. we did haircuts and we gave away free food. There was yeah. 200 people that showed that up. Showed yeah. up. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Way yeah. to go, outreach team and everyone that served. That was so great. We're not, just a, we're not just a church in our city anymore. We're a church for our city. And so Lynette Duncan and your family, thank you so much for stepping up to help yeah. with the outreach. Um, it's been awesome to see yeah. that happen. Well... Here's some things that we saw this year that would help encourage you just to space on this last year. Uh, 3,162 positions, squad member positions, were filled this year yes. so far in our church. Y'all, yes. that's like, that's 64 squad members a week that it takes yeah. to pull off a weekend here at our church so that we can have an irresistible experience. Um, so there's obviously always opportunities to serve and be a part in that Um not just that, but based off last October, last fall, into this t this fall, we have seen 76% growth in our church. Woo! Kids area in here, absolutely incredible. That's right. So, we Because of that, we have seen 70 first-time guests that, came to check that out has come yeah. to check it out, and then 91 first-time kids. kids. Yeah, our kids are inviting oh everybody. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All your kids are going and telling everyone at school, which is absolutely incredible. But I here's know. the real numbers right here. We've seen 69 people decide to make Jesus their personal Lord and Savior. They followed him this year. Just this year. We're not talking about the few hundreds from the last 10 years. We're just talking about this year. Yeah. And after today, 45 people this year have made a decision to be baptized at Authentic Church. And so, it's awesome. And so it's just been absolutely incredible to see so the last thing is this which is kind of leading up to my my ending um is number 10 which you can let them know what happened yes the release offering we um we started we felt god put it on our heart to start doing the release offering which is just a one an ending end of the year big gift where we give um, back to god above and beyond our regular tithes and offering and uh 2020 we announced it we're like we're going to do this and then we all know what happened um, we all had to shut down, and we're like, oh, this is great. Like, I don't know how this is going to happen. And uh, so that end of the year, we took up. Um, yeah, because at the end of the year, I was like, should we even have the release offering? Right, because we, we had just COVID. got back we in. We announced it, and we said, we're going to do this, and then COVID hit. And then and it was like, why, are we even going to do this? Like, no one was expecting COVID. And yeah. I feel like God was like, I told you to do this. Right. I knew COVID would be there. So we're just like, guys, we're still going to give. In yeah. the middle of a pandemic. That's right. And so we did it. And what did we get? $21,000. $21,000. Above just a regular yes. Titan offering. Y'all, 
without the 76% growth with everyone that was here, you yeah. all gave. And because of that, we were able to do more mm -hmm. the next year with our budget. And how many people know last year, Ooh, obviously, it was a top 10 moment. Not just that you guys went and gave now 27000 You guys gave more than you did the year before. Not that we were expecting that, but you guys did. Mm -hmm. And then we found out after my Sunday afternoon nap that Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma also gave us $100,000 oh, in one week. It never gets old. It never does. <laughs> it never gets old. And so... The release offering, if you're new to our church every year, is that we do this on our birthday and stuff. It's because we don't want to receive on our birthday. We want to give on our birthday. And uh, and it's allowed us to be faithful with that. And so what we do as a church, we always tithe. If you're here and you want to start tithing and being a part and being a faithful giver, you can start that today. Uh, but we take a day of the year where we give above and beyond and we stretch our faith. Um, and it takes sacrifice. Um, but we know on the other side of our sacrifice are people. And so we've seen God do that. And so when that $100,000 came in, I had my father call me, or I was telling my dad what happened. He's like, are you kidding me? I was like, yeah, I'm just kidding. He goes, what? I was like, no, it was real. And he, he told me something. He said, that's a reminder that you're in the right place. It's a reminder that God is blessing what we are doing. So it's not really about the $100,000 as much as it is about God's favor. Because when you know God's favor is on something, you know his favor is on something. And that moment was a moment that we realized God's favor was on our church. And I just want to let you guys know, all these moments we've talked about has shown that God's hands in this church. I told Liz as I was praying, I was like, we're going to have first-time guests here today. And they're going to be like, they're not even going to hear a message from Pastor Sean. I was like, I hope they hear tons of them. I hope that if you're here today, you're like, I'm looking for a church that's alive. I'm hoping for a church where God's hand is upon. I'm hoping for a church that, that bets the farm with faith. I, I'm hoping for a church that's going to continue to do great things for God. I hope that you would see the last 10 years. Is exactly what God is doing in our church, and we're not gonna we're not gonna sink back. We're gonna believe the more for the next ten years to come as well. And so, what we're gonna do in this moment, as I pray, is we're gonna give to the release offering. Today is release offering day. We're not just showing it on you. We've been announcing that for a while, and uh, and so we're gonna give in this moment. You can start preparing that right now. But I want to say this: as I was preparing, I was like Lord, help us not forget the memories. As we look backward, we see everything you've done. So I pray right now that it would inspire our faith to say, you know what, God, you've been faithful, but I want to make more memories. I want to make more memories. I want to see more memories in the next 10 years. I thought about this because my mom, if you guys don't know, maybe you have a family member like this. Uh, she has so many memories on her phone, if it's pictures or if it's videos. Uh, but she does not like to delete any memories, even the picture of the random tree that's up in. And, uh, and so with her storage so full, a Apple iCloud storage always says, you have no more room. You have no more room. So that my dad's always like, babe, you got to delete some pictures if you want to make more memories. And the issue is, she's like, I don't want to delete memories. And I get that. We don't want to delete memories. And God's asked us to remember the memories of what he has done. So what you can do is if you run out of room, you can get on Apple iCloud and you can buy more storage. Just like you can at the U-Haul storage, you can do it. In the cloud, you buy more cloud space. I don't even know what that looks like, uh, but you buy more storage. And I remember I've been there before, and when you buy more storage, what happens is it gives you more storage so you can put more memories in. And now as I was praying today, as we give in this re release offering, that's exactly what we are doing. We're at a point now where I feel like God has just blessed us to where we are. And we've looked back on the memories, and we're not deleting memories, but we want to make space for more memories. And how do we do that? we got to buy more storage. We got we to gotta do it through generosity. Do you know what's created space the last 10 years for everything we just talked about? It has been the sacrifice of the people who are around you. It's been all the serving. It's been all the giving. It's been all the faithfulness. The reason we are here today is because they said, I'm going to buy some storage with my time, with my treasures, and with my talents, and I'm going to be faithful with it. Why? Because I want to create more memories. So here's my question for you, church. Do you want to help create more memories in the next 10 years? Do you want to make more memories like we just saw in the next 10 years? Because who knows what that looks like. It could be church planning. It could be another campus. It could be another experience. Whatever it looks like, I know God's going to create more memories in us. So right now, I'm going to show you a picture. If you are giving to the release offering, I don't want you to get confused. If you're writing a check, you can write release on that check or the envelope if you're doing cash. Just make sure it's signified towards release. I'm not talking about your tithe. That goes to the storehouse first, above and beyond. Uh, we have a picture as well of what it looks like um, when you're giving on your app or when you're giving text to give, there's a drop down arrow that you can give on. And what it looks like is that top right there, it'll say release. Some says tithe and offering and there's another account. 
make sure to select the release fund when you give to it so that our bookkeeping, everyone knows exactly where it's at and that's the best way to go about that as well. But in this moment, we're gonna pray, we're gonna sit for a second, and then we're gonna do some announcements um, as we dismiss. But I just wanna say happy birthday. God's been so faithful and I was just so excited to share the memories with you as a church, but let's make more memories. Let's make more memories as we give today. So Lord, we just thank you so much that we would be faithful to give just what you prompted our hearts to, not out of reluctance, not out of compulsion, not out of pressure. Lord, if all of us just gave what you asked us to give, that's all it would take. So whatever you're laying on hearts right now, I just pray for obedience, including me and my wife. I pray, Father God, as we give in obedience, Father God, that you would take care of the needs of this community, that you would take care of the needs of this church, that you would take care of the needs of whatever you see in the future that maybe we don't see yet. We know, Father God, that it's the faithful generosity of your church that helps us expand the kingdom of God, the light that expels the darkness more and more each day. Lord, I pray right now against every attack that's tried to stop people's faith from being a part today. I pray, Lord, as they step out in faith, I pray for a blessing. Lord, we do not give to get, but I'm praying this right now. We do not give to get, but I pray that you would bless this church in ways that they will look back and say, God has been faithful. I pray that they would never, ever second guess giving again because of how you're gonna bless our church, Father God. Pour out the blessings of heaven upon them. Pour out the peace of heaven upon them. Pour out the joy of heaven. Whatever they're praying and believing for, open up things, Father God, that only you can open up, Lord. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name. With eyes closed, if you're here, and we mentioned that we had 69 people make a decision to follow Jesus, say, you know what? I'm here and I see what God's doing in this church, but I'm not a believer in Christ and I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow him for the first time. I want to pray a prayer with you. You can do that right now. Just put your trust in Jesus. You don't have to clean yourself up. That's Jesus' job. You have to put your faith in the fact that he died for you and he rose again for you. And we do that through a simple prayer and a simple belief saying, God, not only do I believe in you, I'm going to live for you. So church, can you repeat this prayer with me? For those who are in this room, if you need to pray this for the first time, I want you to repeat this with me. Say, Father, thank you for sending Jesus for me. I'm the sinner. You're the Savior. I need you. Clean me today. Make me brand new. Forgive my past. I want a brand new start. I put my trust in you, and I put my faith in you. I make you my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.